ching ching. Hello, America <laughs> and the world. Ciao, this is Esther. Alfred here. Of You, Me, and Sicily. Welcome to our channel, or welcome back to You, Me, and Sicily. And today, we're going to just tell you how we see it from our deck. <laughs> Day after Ferragusto. And everybody ate on the beach, I am told, hot dogs and marshmallows, right? <laughs> no, no that's in all seriousness. Ferragusto is a national holiday, August 15th. Everything is closed and people go to the beach or the mountains or chill out at home like we did. But they eat pasta al forno, watermelon, barbecue. And they eat and eat and eat, like Massimo said in the last video. You told me that uh, most of the uh, most of the markets had takeout available for clients, right? Yes. Pasta al forno and stuff. Yeah, but what I did was make pasta al forno here, and it wasn't my best job. Let me just give you a hint: when you make pasta al forno, make enough sauce because when you bake it, a lot of that sauce gets absorbed into the pasta and got a little bit dry. But what are you gonna do? Plus, there was no meat, no peas. <laughs> you want to know something? <sighs> it's the effort. And the woman tried during 90-degree heat to make her man happy <laughs> by making her pasta al forno. What do you want me to say? All right. Well, I'm that's not, I'm that. not complaining. Did I complain? Oh, no. You ate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't complain. <laughs> In case you guys are wondering what this deliciousness is, it's called an April Spritz, and you make it with Prosecco. I use a little bit of frizzy white wine and Aperol, which adds a little bit of a flavor. It's very light, very refreshing, and when you come here, you just have to try one. But Alfred, you like it with the Campari. I like the Campari. I like Campari anyways, anyway, uh, whether it's on the rocks. It's kind of like a bitter... But in a Campari, in a, uh, a Campari spritz is terrific too. That's another very popular one. There's lots of different summer drinks here. You just have to come here, here and try it, right? Yeah, the summer drinks here are terrific. There are Mojica, uh, the ones with the Brazilian uh, mojito. Mojito, excuse me, the one with the Brazilian uh, candy cane, uh, not candy cane, sugar cane mm -hmm. rum. It's just freaking great. But that's a hot drink over here. Yeah. Yeah. You know what you can't find here? At least I've been trying. Maybe I've been looking in the wrong aisle. I've been looking for ginger beer mm -hmm. so I can make a Moscow mule. But I just found out that ginger beer really isn't beer. Really? What is that? Yeah. It's like a root beer. It's like a soda. And it's sold in the soda aisle. So the next time I go to the market, I have to see if I could find ginger beer to make Moscow. I thought it would, Moscow had alcohol in it. Well, I was told it doesn't, so I don't know. Oh, but ginger beer. No, I don't know. Anyway, so some of you guys have written asking about where to find information about festivals here in Sicily. Let me just start out by saying that every month, in every part of Sicily, there's some kind of a festival. Depends on where you are. But one of the things that you could do is go to the community's website. So each town has a community where they list all the events. The churches often list the events. And I say also go to Facebook groups. There's Facebook groups in different parts that list um, all the festivals that are happening. Or there's a website called Visit Sicily. It's put up by the region. It's an official site where they have a listing of some but not all of the festivals. So that's my little hint for the day. This week, if God wants, and uh, the weather holds out, we're actually going to hit two, two festivals. Mm -hmm. One for sure in Archie San Antonio, I'm hoping. And then the other one is going to be in Valverde, the Anchovy Festival. What's the first one? The Feast of Saint, Saint Anthony? The San Feast Antonio? of San Antonio. Patron but Saint, yeah. The very interesting thing about this is that they have a thousand lights, so it's decorated. No, with they have a million lights. A million a lights, lights. A million nights. A and million if I go lights. digging, Allegedly. I'm going to try to count them. If all. I go digging, I may have some footage from past years, and it only happens every four years. <laughs>
some of these festivals, you know, we say anchovy festival. And if you don't like anchovy, you're saying, oh, God, well, I don't want to go to that. But let me just tell you that with all these festivals, there's all types of foods, of street foods, always Sicilian craftsmen selling their wares, whether it's jewelry or ceramics or um basket or t-shirts or handmade something there's always music and sometimes there are even fireworks so when we say anchovy festival <clears throat> there'll be much more there than just anchovies i i enjoy going to the one in Achi san antonio which is a beautiful little town not so far away because they have a nunnery there and the nuns actually go to the festival and I don't think they get out. I think it's one of those cloistered deals. Yeah. And they yeah, and they go out. And they also have a beautiful Sicilian cot display, as I recall. Well, let's see if they have Hopefully it. They and have the it Sicilian music. Huh? And the Sicilian music. And, honestly, the second best Crispelli I had was made by a sidewalk vendor there a few years ago, four years ago. So I'm looking to, to go mm -hmm. back there and to try that... Uh, that uh, Crispelli, I hope it's still around. Who the heck knows if it's still so around? So those are fun. So there's two types of festivals. There's the religious festival and also the food festival, which is a celebration of, you know, this one is the anchovy, or you have the cachofi, the artichoke. You even have strawberry festivals. You have prickly pear festivals. You have truffles festival. You have the pistachio festivals because people here are just so proud of their products, of their produce, that they create an entire celebration around it. So it's quite a thing to see, let me tell you. You know, this time of the year, honestly, from the second half of August through September and the first two weeks of October uh, is really my, my favorite time of the year, only because of all the things that are now being brought to harvest. There's just like this week, uh, we got some uh, figs, for example. Grapes. They, we got grapes, my favorite type of white grapes here. Uh, the figs were terrific. I, I'm, I'm still waiting for the uh, purple uh, figs to come out. Mm -hmm. Hey, did you know that uh, the figs over here that are made naturally, you know how, you know how they're made? Oh. Uh, with wasp. A wasp kind of goes in there, and I guess he dies in there in order to pollinate them. That's why there's See, always wasps around fig trees. The time. wasp, a fig tree could not pollinate itself except two ways. Number one, with a wasp, mm -hmm. and number two, by commercial, you know, help, so to speak. But uh, the figs are just great. I really, I just, what else do you like here for this time of the year? Besides figs and... Well, the watermelon. Watermelon. We're oh, still boy. maybe a few more weeks of the watermelon. And then... If you guys have been here for a while, you know my favorite, stuffed artichokes. That'll be at least another month. Yeah, and also the chestnuts will be coming out. Yeah. So anyways, and then all the greens, the different types of greens that grow here. The broccoli. From the broccoli to the rabi to uh, you name it. Now, the cauliflower. We'll be seeing that stuff for like six months straight. You know what I was surprised to see already are what? pumpkins. Pumpkins. But it's not like zuka. the orange. Is that what they call zuka? Yeah. yeah, but zuka. it's not like that orange pumpkin that we get in other parts. Very different. The what, pumpkin what would you call filled that? Uh, raviolis. Ooh. Those are, those are killer. No, you have no idea. Those are killer. And the other ones that are killer are the, those little round things, and I can't think of the names. The little pastas, and inside the little pasta, they put zuka. Killer. Crema de zucca is very good. Crema de pasta, pasta crema de zucca. Yeah, very good. I just like to throw it into the toaster oven, put a little bit of maple syrup on it as a side. Very good. It's great. As a matter they of fact, they also do the pumpkin seeds here. It's very popular. So, as a side, for the next couple of days, I'm assuming I'm going to have some pasta al forno, right, Esther? <laughs> I'm never going to hear the end of this. You know what she did to me today? This. Listen to this. She says, Alfred, we have to go to Sea Bus in San Giovanni La Punta. Will you please take me? <coughs> me being the nice boyfriend that I am, said, of course, sweetheart. So for work, it, I may add. This for work. Our work. Okay, our work, right. She had to go over schedules for September and October with the bus company. Okay, we have a whole bunch of stuff doing. I said, sure, sweetheart. So we go over there during the blazing sun, 
And I don't like going into the bus company because there's a steep hill that I have to walk down to that absolutely kills my knee. So I say, no, I'm going to wait in the car. So I waited in the car for an hour, almost an hour and a half. And I had no water. And finally, I, I said to myself, so this is how a puppy dog feels. For an is hour it, and a half. Is it my turn yet? For my... <laughs> told him to come into the office he didn't want to he said no I'm gonna smoke my stogie and go on the internet and sit in the car Al come down here no he didn't want to but watch this we went to Via Grande afterwards and he wouldn't let up on it watch this this is an especially beautiful bell don't you think help me help me help me Esther left me in a locked car for one hour I was dying are we on? We're on. I'm having life-sustaining lemon grenade. I can feel the power coursing back into my veins. After she left me in a locked car for one hour. It's your choice. I was dot with no I was water. 90 degrees here today. So what I do is I get that lemon granita, as that's to show you, and I put it in a glass of water, and if I want to add salt to it, I could have my aqua salad in the morning, but I just, my favorite drink. I just need to get my body temperature All right, can we talk about... Because she left me in <laughs> her the car for an hour. So I never heard the end of it, and he's still talking about it. His fault. I know what a puppy dog feels like now. Stop honestly. it. Al, you have some important you know what I actually did? info. But you know what I actually did, what? though? I mean, to be honest with you, I found the little hut where they where the guys wash the bus, buses. Yeah. And I noticed that it was so in the shade. So you were suffering too, too much. So huh? I actually went in the hut. Not in the hut because it didn't have walls on it. So you I were busting my balls for nothing. I was stuff. busting your balls for nothing. Yeah, but just to give you give you the business though. But anyway, you I have do have some, some important news. Yeah. information. Listen, for you folks, I see on Facebook and all these places they're advertising these things called the so-called uh, suitcases and carry-ons called smart luggage. And basically, you'll see the advertisement where the gal is plugging in her cell phone outside of the luggage as she's wheeling it through the airport, okay, to mm -hmm. charge it, or your laptop, okay? Yeah. Just so you know, British Airway, uh, Ryanair, and another big one, another mm -hmm. carrier here, said forget about it. You can't Why? bring those on because they're powered, they're run by lithium batteries, and there's a fear that they could mm. explode Ooh, in, the car, in the car, not in the cargo area, but in the, you know, the passenger area. So unless you take out the lithium battery completely and disconnect it, from what I understand, it's very difficult, do not bring that That's because people are having their luggage, they have to leave it behind. That's a good tip. That's just a new, something new about that. And make sure, make sure that you're, your your name is on the luggage, okay? And take a picture of your luggage and, more importantly, have the address of where you're going to be staying here in Sicily, Italy, or wherever you're going. Because as it's happened a lot, if you're watching this in 2022 in the summer, a lot of luggage has been delayed, has been misplaced, has been whatever. So they'll need the address of the hotel that you're staying at so they can deliver it. I have a but neon... But wait a second. One, one more ahead, thing about that. So we had uh, two clients here from the United States in July, and the guy's luggage did not arrive. Then the next day, it still didn't arrive. And he called them, and he checked online, and nothing. Guess what he did? He was pretty smart. He actually went to the airport... And you can't go back there where they're holding the luggages. But he physically went to the airport here in Catania and asked them to look at it. Because they've been so overwhelmed with luggages being delayed or misplaced or whatever, that they may not get to your luggage till later. So that was really smart of him. And, of course, they found it immediately. He went to the person and said, listen, I've been waiting for two days. Can you just go back there and check? On, on my bags that I – when I, I don't – travel anymore with a carry-on 
Okay, from that, when, I can, when I just have my man bag with me that has my regular stuff and an empty suitcase when I go back to the States because that's where I fill it up. But my bag has two things on it that nobody else does. The first thing it has is a green, a light green day glow uh, strap around the handle. Mm -hmm. So when it comes off the conveyor belt, it's the only one that's, you know, a day glow green, light green. Do you know what I have? Do you remember what Wait I have? Wait a minute. Okay, I'll tell you what the second thing is. Go ahead, yeah. tell me. Do you remember? What? The pink breast cancer uh, handkerchief. Ah, I I've have using it for eight years. I have two the letters MFB in big letters on the side. M F B on the side. <laughs> First word is my. The last word is bag. And I, I'll leave it to your imagination what the F is, okay? <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's on my bag. No, it is It is a good idea. I do have that pink handkerchief so that when the luggage comes, I see it. And also make sure you take a photo because, as I mentioned before, if you have to um, tell them that your luggage is lost or delayed or whatever, you have a picture of it as well. Can I tell one more hot but, tip about, but we, about, before about you the do bags? That, see, you said don't do carry-on, and I say make sure you do a carry-on because if your luggage doesn't arrive, you want to have a change well, of clothes. Well, obviously, that you'll was just have for a frequent flyer like me. <laughs> <laughs> you'll want to have a carry-on. Listen, I have me. one more hot Late summer tip to travel tip, okay? Yeah. Especially going back to the States because they're all over this right now. Do not bring any type of fresh fruits back into the United States of America. You'll be fined up to $500. Do not bring things like cold meats, like, you know, go buy some prosciutto, try to sneak it in at the market. Forget that idea. Don't buy any cheeses at the local supermarkets and put it in your, uh, uh, you know, fold it up and put it in Not your even luggage. If it's sealed, you, you can't. Unless it's stamped FDA approved for cheeses and also for the meats like salamis and so forth, which they sell at the duty free, okay. which costs a ton of dough, but they sell them there. Any other thing will be subject. Not only so what are forfeiture, the forfeiture. So what are the things? So we've all got cold meats. All cold meats. All so you cheeses. Can't even, even all a, fresh fruit. Wait a sec. But you can't even go to the supermarket. They're sealed. No. Even if they're sealed tight. I don't care if they're tight. sealed or whatever. However they are, unless okay. they're stamped. So with no the FDA salami, approval, no forget. cold cuts, no cheeses. Only no. at duty free. That's correct. Now, do people do it? They do. However, they risk getting. Uh, a huge fine of five hundred nuts. You can take nuts. Pistachios. I take my two every place I go. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm not going to leave my nuts home. Nuts? <laughs> you crazy? You want to leave my oh nuts my home? Oh my gosh! No, but it's seriously, seriously, it nuts you can take, right? Yeah, you talking about like cash, Peanuts, salted cashews, pistachios. stuff like that. Yes, yes. yeah. That's However, you can't take like, for example. An almond that you pick off a tree. Well, obviously. Okay? Or a chestnut that you pick off a tree. Obviously. That have the big covers on the top of them. Obviously. Because of they fear insect infestation. And there's been plenty of time. This year alone, United States Customs Services has confiscated 54 invasive pests coming into the United States. From I was just reading countries. a big article about it. From different so countries. just be careful, okay? That's good advice. Well, thank very you good. very much. Could I bring my nuts with me, though? <laughs> <laughs> Only what else? here what else? in you, me, and Cecily. Hey, you know, this summer has been unbelievable for superstars from Hollywood coming here. Sharon Stone was here. A bunch of Beyonce was here. And now Madonna is here for her 64th birthday. And she's there with her son and husband and 100 of her closest friends. They've been How many? Hundred of family and friends and staff, obviously, and they're partying in Mazamami and Noto and all these places. She, so I've her been family following is her. of Sicilian extraction. Yeah, Chicone, one, Chicone Yeah, name. I think, and one of them is from up north. I can't remember where, but yeah. But I know that she has some Sicilian in her. Believe me. Oh I mean, yeah. She probably has every. She probably has had every <laughs> nationality there is in her, but uh, she has Sicilian <laughs> in her. And the other person who's here right now, if you're watching this in mid-August, is Michael Jordan. 
Imagine that with this family. Michael Jordan's here? Uh, Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson is Magic here. Wow. Johnson. Yeah, he's in Sheffalo, I heard, right? He's in Tarmina. He's in Sheffalo. He's all over the place. So that's pretty good. Listen, so he's I, getting I wanna, discovered. I have to apologize for people uh, because for the last couple of weeks, according to a couple of emails I got, I looked a tad on the scruffy side with my beard. And it, it, the reason was, it was actually two reasons. I was trying to fill in over here a Were little bit. Were you trying to be like your brother? But I lost my, my razor. What do you mean you lost your razor? I, my electric razor that it's got the little thing on it Al. that makes it do the right size. Al, it's on my shelf. You took it. You don't <laughs> do your legs in, under your arms with my razor, do you? <laughs> God. God help her. Please, Lord. God help us. All right. <laughs> And then number two is, uh, yeah. uh, last second thing I want to say is, I got I got somebody complained that that I was smoking a cigar on, you know, the videos. Uh, let me just rephrase that sentence. Some, somebody was complaining oh. that on my own video program, I was smoking, I smoke a cigar. I, I, if I offend you, I'm sorry about it, but, you know, I'm at the tail end of my life. I could see the... The end of the tunnel approaching. And I enjoy my stogies. So if it offends you, I'm sorry. Focus on Esther. <laughs> you don't have to focus on me. That's what I want to say. No, come on, Al. Come on. I have no comment about your cigar smoking. What? None. None. You don't? For the record, people, I have no comment. None. Every time I take a picture, she says, "Put where's your stogie? So I have to have my stogie. You say that to me all I the do. time. She because does. you're so cool with it. No, you You're know what so it cool is, actually? It. It's like a Clint Eastwood type of thing, you know. I don't inhale them. I smoke like four a day. It's a 15-minute thing to put something in your mouth, you know, it's like an oral fixation. I used to be a heavy cigarette smoker back when I was in my 40s. No, but I watch. You don't inhale. I never inhale. And it's just something that, you know, when you're on camera, instead of fidgeting. I could be fidgeting, right? But no, I don't you're fidget. not a fidgeter. No, so this way I'm swaying, no, I'm debonair. You're, yes, you're all of that. <laughs> what else? Okay, that's it. That's it. Palermo Peace is going up on Friday. Stay tuned. Very excited about that. She's worked very hard on it. And another uh, programming note, this morning we got up <clears throat> with all intentions to go to Catania and to do... The World War II Museum. And in yeah. preparation, I watched multiple videos on uh, the Catania Museum, so as did we, Esther. We both so did. Because we need background. to... Background. No, not just the background, but to stake out, you know, what equipment to bring, what lights to bring, and so forth, like what to expect. Obviously, we know a little bit about... Well, Alfred knows a lot about what happened here in 1943 and during that era. But we just wanted to be prepared, and we decided that we are going to go back there but use a, one of our local guides, Juicy, if she's available. I want to bring a guide there, and yeah, I also want to tie in the uh, the museum also. With Cassible. With where? Casible. Casible. In the province by... of Siracusa, where the armistice was signed, and there's actually a statue That's there. That's where the armistice was signed, and we're going to actually be going there in about 10 days. Yeah. So we'll pick up that footage. That's I also want to go to, to the, uh, see one of the cemeteries here. They have a British cemetery outside have, of Catania and one in and We one have in to go to the Catania one. We have yeah. to go through that. So, I mean, I want to make it... I want to make it... is the British one. I want to make it a good piece uh, so that when people watch it, they're going to say, wow, this was a terrific tribute to all the men and women from the United States, Canada, uh, England especially, other allies who in 1943 slogged their way uh, up from Jella or wherever they were from there and into and to kick the Nazis out. I think it's a very important study. Very important. And it's going to require some additional time. So we put it back in our scheduling. But at some point in time, within the next several months, we will have this piece for you for sure. That's what I wanted to say. About All that. right. Can I ask you guys, if you're watching this in on uh, North America area, what do you guys think of the things that I added in our shop? 
It's down below. What did you video. add in the shop? I added t-shirts. I added tote bags. I added app aprons. I added, uh, added hats. I added all types of things. It's brand new. It's in our shop. Let me know what else you would like to see down there. We don't make a ton of do re mi on the stuff that YouTube makes, but I want to tell you why we do it, okay? Number one, Esther's mom is 80 years old. She's the one that's been packing stuff up and going to uh, the post office to mail stuff that you've ordered for Esther. My daughter Jennifer has been slogging to the uh, mailbox to pack up books that I've had. And t-shirts. And, and t-shirts. My mom doesn't do that much anymore, and you yeah. know, I'd like for her to just stop. But I know that people have asked us about, we do have t-shirts left. We do have t-shirts. And believe me, when I get sure. home in October, I'm going to be... I'm going to be blowing them out just to get rid of them because I can go to we'll the have a, post office myself. Well, wait a sec. Let me, let's have a special when I go home in November. Yeah, we could do it when I'm home and with your home. We'll do a okay? special. Perfect. But then after that, if you want a T-shirt, you could just buy it on YouTube. We on make like about 10% of the price or maybe even less. less. It's not that you make a lot of money, less. right? Less. But but anybody who wears a you, a you Me, and Sisley hat, <coughs> excuse me, it's a good thing. And we like that. My friend Tom Ogle, <laughs> that was his name? That's <coughs> this right. This man by the name of Tom Ogle. Oh, Hi, Tom. Oh, so fun. Friend of, uh, who was B. he your friend? B. B and Don. And, yeah, B and Don Green in, in June. I had one black Yumi and Sisley hat left. One. Okay, that's all I had. One. And I wore it uh, that lovely week with these four people. Mary, and Tom kept on. Mary and Tom. Com Tom kept on admiring my hat, right? Yeah. So finally, right before I left, I says, Tom, you really like this hat? He goes, yeah. He says, he says, if I had that hat, I would never take it off. And he said it to me in such a way that I know that this guy <laughs> is going to wear that hat all over, situate over. Well, wherever. it was so funny because B wore her Yumi and Sicily shirt on the airplane, and someone actually stopped her in Rome, I think it was, and said, Yumi and Sicily, we know those guys on YouTube. Can you believe that? I know Jack Allensworth wears, wears his all yes. the time. Yes, yes. I know Joe Asioni. Joe, I hope you're feeling good. I hope... Joe Asioni wears, yes. I mean, he wears his stuff all the time. Of course, Jimmy I'm Ingram. Of course, all of our. There's a lot of our loyal fans that. In fact, if you are wearing a Yumi and Sicily product that we are selling, that's on Shopify, not on YouTube. Send us a picture. Would love to see it. On yeah, that we'll put note, it up honey, on, we'll put it up on we'll our, our, on our on thing Facebook, over here. For sure. On that note. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like. By the way, have you subscribed to our channel? If you're enjoying this type of videos and many others from all over Sicily, consider subscribing to our channel because that way you'll be notified every time we post new content. And to save the biggest news of the day. The best to the end. The best to the end. Fiber. Internet. Internet fiber so we may be is going now live again. at the end of our driveway. <sighs> After September 1st, <gasps> we could have it installed, which means that we can go back and do we'll live, live programming within six weeks or so, for we'll sure. We'll see. Let's see. In All the right. meantime, but people seem to like this format, too, of uh, pre That's pre-recorded but on this road yeah. much more on the road but we appreciate you guys hanging in with us our yeah, numbers are way thank up you. our numbers are way up thank the, you for the being the Ortega piece that we did two or three weeks ago how long ago something like that over 10,000 views only on YouTube forget our other f platforms uh, you know Hulu and all this other stuff that yeah. we do Amazon so Apple we thank you thank you thank you for it's watching it's great thank you very much oh uh, we will see you on another video of You, Me, and Sicily. And look at that. I need to freshen this drink up. Ching, ching, honey. Sabena Diga. Grazie a tutti. Ciao. Ciao.